Should you start an at-home nail salon business? Should you booth rent or go into a commission situation? We're gonna talk about all these right now. Should I stay or should I go, Trace? Go. 100%. One million, gajillion percent go. Yeah, but what would you do? What would happen to you? I, I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> Is that your celebration, dads? <laughs> Stop it. It's disturbing. I'm gonna do it until you. I have I have questions that I don't want answered. I don't want Stop answered. It. I don't want them answered. I'm jealous okay. of my moves. <laughs> yes, I'm jealous of your moves. All right. Um, this is also a question that we get often, right? Somebody starting out in the industry, about to go pro. Um, do we have a special guest by the way? Lion is here. It's like he wants up, but he doesn't. He doesn't want up. up. Yeah, exactly. Um, sh a lot of people asking, hey, can I just start out of my own house to begin with? Should I start in a commission situation or should I just go straight booth rent to, to kickstart my nail career? What is the best avenue? I think this is a good topic and maybe we can give some direction for those that are starting in the industry, Trace. What are your thoughts on this? Yes. Yes. And that today and is no. the episode. And yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, yeah, I think we could give some insight. You yeah. know, everybody's going to be different. Right. Uh, but I think we can give some... Uh, Direction. Things to think about, yeah. right? Um, going straight into a booth rent or salon situation yourself. Well, let's. we can actually separate those two, I think. Going into a booth rent situation, we'll start there. Um, you know, you, you got to you gotta wait... You know, are you going in a salon that's going to help you, you know, you know, because you really don't know when you're first getting out of school what you're doing. It, it can be very risky. Um, I, I did it. I don't really recommend it for everybody. Going straight into booth rent. Right. Yeah. Out. Okay. It worked for me. I didn't have to make money right away. I had a buffer, right? Okay. But you got to think about that. Like you're not, you're paying weekly, monthly, whatever, it, whatever it is and paying for all your product, everything. And you are solely responsible for building your clientele. Right. And there is no clientele at that time. Right. So you got you, something to think about. You know, I remember the first time I made like $17 for a polish change and they took me. I was stoked. Yeah. You know, but that wasn't even the first week, you yeah. know. So you got you got to really weigh those things, you know. Um, on the flip side, you go into a commission you know, a lot of times it, they either pay you hourly or strictly commission, however it is. But basically, you're working for someone. Okay, now the responsibility is off you a little bit, right? They're more than likely probably going to help you learn, encourage you, show you things. Also, they're going to make sure that there's people in your chair. It's mm -hmm. important to them that there's people in your chair. So what, what does that mean is when people call in, they're going to be booking them with you. They're you're going to be promoting you on, hopefully they have social media, things like that. And you are not responsible for giving them an income. You know, well, you're making the money, but you're not having to go, here's $200 for this week's rent. And right. here's for all the product. And you, you know, but the, the flip side, bad side of that is... They're now taking a chunk of your money right. once you build a clientele. <clears throat> and a lot of times they'll tell you what products you can and can't use because they're, they're purchasing it. So sometimes if it's not maybe a really person that's rooted into nails, they might like go be going slow, solely on price mm -hmm. versus, you know, quality, what quality product, yeah. you know, things like that. So, um, you got to think about those those two, and then I would say salon is kind of a just even a more intense version of booth renting because now you're very responsible, right, for everything. Salon is a more what, owning what a salon. Owning a salon, got you. Yeah, and you know where you're going to have other people. I would I would kind of put a, a salon suite and booth renting kind of in the, in the same, same category. category. Yeah, but like if you're going to you know open one and have other people, I've I personally, and I know people have been successful that have done it. I have personally seen it done a couple times and it was not successful. Opening. Yes. Yeah. Because you are now bringing in nail techs and you don't know what you do. And right. they smell blood in the water and they walk all over you. Usually um, people go way heavy on these contracts and everything that, you know, because they haven't been in the industry and they, it's, it, is it a different beast? It's yeah, a, you know, it's a totally different beast. Businesses are fairly similar similar all the way around but there are different aspects to 
the, the beauty industry. That, of course. That's typical. Yeah. Um, you're dealing with clients. You've never had to deal with clients and people being upset. And then you may not be as great as you will be. I wasn't um, at first. So you're getting complaints. That's against the salon. Right now, you're, you, the salon might be getting bad reviews and things like that because you don't know what you're doing yet. Right, right. So something away. What about at home? If somebody mm. said, "Hey, I want to start. I can't." So to to alleviate the pressure of I have to pay booth rent right away. Well, what if I start my business out of my house? There's no rent. I don't have that financial pressure anymore. Um, is that? A route that I can take. I know several people that have really, really cute places either in the back of their house or they have it inside their house and they do very well. It's it's kind of more common in um, international. Got it. Like uh, uh, when we go to the UK, a yeah. lot of those girls run it out of their, but that's typical. On the other side of that though, especially if you're just starting out, it is a hard sell to get someone to come to your house. It's a little strange in the US. <clears throat> it's not that common. Right. So, um, and, and it's hard to have boundaries. Right. Um, I had a sister-in-law that ran stuff out of her house and people li literally just walk through her door, not even an appointment, just like, this is your house. Like yeah. there needs to be boundaries at 11 o'clock at night and it didn't bother her. So that's why there was no boundaries. Right. But that's just weird to me. And you got to remember you still are regulated. You have right. to be up to whatever that state has determined you can have an in-house salon. You have, most of the time, you have to have a separate entrance. You have to have a separate bathroom. You have to have, so you, you and, and remember if someone's not happy, they might turn you in. You, so yeah. you got to think about all that. So you got to make sure it's legal. Legit. 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 Whatever licensing you need, you, you got to check yeah. in your state to make sure. Is it possible for someone, let's say they have a long-term plan of like, hey, I eventually want to have my own booth ranch or my own salon suite. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do commission because I love using Young Nails products. I want to keep using them, Trace. Okay. Yeah. And makes sense. yes, makes sense. it makes sense. Um, so maybe the first year, okay, I'll do it out of my house. I'm going to make sure I follow all the regulations, the state licensing, whatever that is. Um, and I do it temporarily and then I build my clientele and I have that income coming and now I can just get it out of my house into like a salon suite. Is that possible to make that transition? I would say it'd be easier <clears throat> to do it in reverse. Um, what do you mean in, in reverse? Going from like working out of your house and then bringing client tell your clientele and go, Hey, I'm going to do my own thing in my home. And oh, I see it's going to be, it's going to take you longer, at least in the U S I've people may disagree with me. It's going to take you longer to build your clientele. Why? A lot of people don't want to go to someone's personal go to someone's home. house. Yeah. I don't, I mean, and, and, and I, I yeah. not that I haven't, but I knew them, you know, after a while. And then, you know, I just, it's a little, I don't, some people are not going to, because, um, they don't know you and yeah. you're showing up at someone's rent, you know, person that you don't know's house. That's just with, with the world we live in, unfortunately, it could be dangerous. And, right. And some people are not, are going to be scared of that. Yeah. The idea of on both sides, right? I'm going to build a clientele. Mm -hmm. I personally don't want just strangers coming to my house. Number one. Number two, on the flip side, if somebody has a service and I need to go to their home, that also would be a little weird to me yeah. as well. So, um, not that it's not doable. It's not possible. Right. It is possible. Excuse me. Yeah. And, and the more you build your clientele, then it's word of mouth and people are like, oh no, it's cool. You I know, see. check it out. Habib. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I go there. It's, it's a fine. And you'll be like, oh, okay. I trust Tr Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, but, but it, it will take you, I feel longer to build that clientele. Yeah. That totally makes sense. Okay. That totally makes sense. So like in the grand scheme if you are somebody that ultimately wants to build a business in a salon suite or booth rent, okay, there's basically two general ways to go about it. The first is if you have a cushion or a buffer or like your significant other is able to support you and that allowing you to build in that environment, that's great. Amazing. Amazing. Or number two, the other way would be to like go work in a commission salon 
under, you know, that roof and get your skills, build it up, build up some cash flow so that you can make that transition on your own. Yeah. Correct. And, and even if you're going to do booth, went, rent, now I can't talk. <laughs> um, I, I recommend that maybe find a place where there's a lot of other hairdressers, nail techs, people you can feed off and learn from before you j- go straight to yeah. one suite. Yeah. And, and the other thing too is commission. I, I've talked about this so many times, but I've met techs that are like, I never want to go booth rent. Like I love not having to think about accounting, marketing, inventory, placing orders, all this stuff. I like showing up, yeah. doing my nails and then going home. And then There's not not having to be that. said about that. There totally there is. Really is. And that's why I said it's different for everybody. We can give you things to think about, but ultimately you're going to make your, like I said, I don't recommend opening a salon straight out of school. People have done it and been successful. Yeah. You know, but, but these are things you should think about. Yeah. I guess another way too, I mean, it's not easy to do, but it is possible. It's like you could, you know, supplement your own income with a, if you have a current job and then you're trying to build a client, it's hard to do, right? That would be hard to do with like having a job. Yeah. I mean, I had to do that with Young Nails. I had to work a second job while still, and I was I was fortunate that I could work until 3, 3 p.m. at Young Nails. And then from three to like nine, I'd go work the second job to actually bring in money because I wasn't getting paid through Young Nails right. until we were able to build. It was flipping really I did it for like three years it was so hard yeah and exhausting yeah thank you know? goodness you're young right I was young though yeah. I was in my I was in my late 20s yeah so it, it, and it's doable and a lot of people have to do it that yeah. way because yeah. there is no choice they can't just dropping an income that's insane you know um you know I more all the props to them because that, that that's that's rough but again everybody has to find their own journey to what they're trying to achieve and everybody's result might be a little different yeah and the thing is too depending on where you're located too trace like let's say you're in an area where there's not a commission salon for like like miles and miles like right. way out and so maybe you have to do that like whatever it is you got to do to make it work you got to do is it going to be hard and exhausting and tiring and like yes yeah all of those things are true yeah what i would say is don't look at it with uh rose colored glasses right yes weigh all your options look at it pros cons everything because i think we paint i did paint this picture in my head of like oh oh, i'm gonna open and then i'm gonna there's gonna be clients in my chair and then and then you do get a client you're like oh crap there's a trillion in my chair (laughs) uh you know so but you got to be realistic of of what that that building part yes how long it takes it's funny i just i was watching this on tiktok um this guy was basically i a lot of people talk about this but i i he was so honest and real and he was like you think building a business is glamorous and you think it's about, oh, look, I got my drink. I'm at the club. I got my car. I got this, that. I'm on jet Influencer planes. Influencer lifestyle. Influencer lifestyle. And he he was like, you are out of your mind. He's like, majority of people can't even handle what it takes to actually build a business. Yeah. And that's the thing. I like what you're saying, Trace. You can't go into this looking at it through, you know, these rose colored lenses, whatever that saying is. I'm saying it totally wrong. (laughs) The flowered, whatever, tinted, be real specs. Um, Yeah, you got to be real. It is going to be very tough and hard. But if you love it, like you find a way to make it happen, whatever your situation is. Like we're talking about, here's a method you can build, you know, commission. You can do this, you can do that. At home is not going to work. Maybe your only choice is at home. Let's just say, figure it out, make it work. You will make it work and it, 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 it you will be successful. You will just be successful. Things to look at. It, things to look at, you know what I mean? And and obviously always do things legal. I want to make sure that we say that, you know, don't, we're not telling you to do something it's legal. It's really better in the long run. It's, <laughs> it's a lot, lot less stress that way. A lot less stress that way. Exactly. Um, but overall, you, you, you have to look at these options. If you love the industry, if you love nails, you will find a way and we are always here to support you in that journey.